Let's start talking in a little bit more depth about the documents that you need to prepare. I'm actually going to go through this very quickly because we've already talked a little bit about some of the documents. But at this point, particularly once you finish your task wording, you really need to get on looking at the documents, start with the ones that I already have up on Moodle, and customize them. Because what we're going to do on Thursday is we're going to talk about recruiting and scheduling participants and actually running your participants. Because that's what you should be doing between Thursday and the following Tuesday. Or the following Thursday, if you want to be really, really on time. All right, so there are four basic types of documents. Now, in terms of actual physical documents, there may, it may be in more than one file or more than four files, but I want you to make sure that you customize all these very carefully. I know I gave some silly examples last time where people didn't do things like change their name. Make sure you change your name. Because, yes, when I saw their video, they actually read that person's name and stopped. All right. The waiver or consent form. This is where the user indicates they are giving permission for you to observe them and take notes. You want to make sure that you include a couple of things. One, remember, we are going to be video recording. You have to video record at least one. You don't have to do all of them, but video record at least one. If you do more than one, that gives you more potential material that you can pull from when you are creating your presentation. So I recommend doing more than one. You are only required to do one. Also remember that your consent form does need to state that they can stop at any time and leave. All right, your entrance questionnaire, designed to collect demographic data, things such as name, age, gender, general computer experience, experience with a particular type of software or product that you are going to be having them test, those sorts of things. Remember to make it relevant to your product. So if we go back, just as a reminder, if we look at the sample entrance questionnaire, remember that it has this in the sample. Should you keep that? So, it, so in the sample that you're given that you have to customize, this is one of the questions that's asked. Should you keep that or should you change it? <coughs> right. Only keep it, only keep it if it has to do with your study. And even then you probably are going to want to modify it. So make sure that you are thinking about this. Because yes, I look at all of these when I am grading your projects. There's also the task-based questionnaire. You want to make sure that you have two different copies of your task-based questionnaire. There are two different samples in Moodle. You can choose the one that works best for you. You're going to have one copy for your participant that actually has the tasks written out the exact wording of the task, don't give them titles, just the exact wording. Do not include your click stream or your step-by-step -step that you expect them to go through to accomplish it. Those things you only include on the facilitator's copy. Please don't give those to your participants. Make sure you have a separate copy for them. This is so that when they're in the middle of the task, a lot of times they're going to want to reread what that task is. And then there's your exit questionnaire. This is where you can ask participants things like, what did they think about the product overall, about the website overall, whether it's the look and feel or how, um, how much they enjoyed using it, those sorts of things. Again, I would keep it to one page. Make sure there are things that are relevant. Make sure you customize the document. Now, your facilitator scripts, make sure that you customize those. Do you remember what I told you about 
why we want to have facilitator scripts. Anyone? Everything has to be exactly the same for all your participants. So you actually need to read those. No ad-libbing, so don't try you need to memorize it. For every participant, you need to have your scripts. You need to read word for word what is on those scripts because you have to try to keep your environment as identical as possible between your participants. <coughs> Make sure you greet your participant. I know it sounds obvious. But a lot of times, what are we doing? We're so focused on getting our stuff done, what do we do? Yeah, go sit down. All right, so make sure you are polite. Use good manners. You greet them. You want to make sure that you explain the process they're going to be going through. Make sure you're, you include that in the script, again, in some of the documents that we have on Moodle. You just need to alter those. Make sure you have a script with what are called acceptable evaluator prompts. Now, what are those? Remember I told you we need to be objective and non-biased? So we're going to go through a little uh, exercise. All right, so let's say I'm working on my project, or working on, on testing, and I say, oh, crap. Excuse me. No, I'm not supposed to use that language. Um, Oh, shoot, <laughs> or something like that. This stupid thing isn't working. What do you think? What do you think our initial reaction tends to be? What's your initial reaction when someone says, this thing uh, is not good? <laughs> what do you think? Don't we tend to give our opinion? Well, that's actually a great question. That's an awesome evaluator prompt. That's what you want to do. Because what we usually do, is, yeah, I know, doesn't it suck? That's why we're testing it. Now, do you want to say that? Yeah, other than you shouldn't use that language on camera anyway. No, because that's not objective. The question you came up with is awesome. Why do you think it's not good? Or you can pare it back to their language. Right, so very objective. Why do you think that? What is the difficulty that you are having? Just very objective. You don't agree or disagree with them. Definitely not. Now, why should you have a list of these? Because it makes your life much easier when you are in the middle of testing. So that you're not sitting there thinking, hmm, I shouldn't say this. What should I say? That way you can just quickly glance down and there you have a script. So I strongly recommend that you just make a short list, maybe five or six neutral prompts or neutral responses that you can use. Make sure you have a debriefing script to use at the end of the test session. Basically what that is is what are you going to say at the end of the session? They call it debriefing. Because sometimes in studies you use deception. We're not using deception. Where you're just basically, again, you just reiterate, and again, there's samples on Moodle. You just reiterate what the study was about. You reiterate that you're not testing them. They're helping you test the product, all that fun and exciting stuff. It's basically a summary of what you initially told them. And there's a very important part of this. What's one of the last things that you should say to them before they leave? Thank you. Thank you. I know, it's another one of those obvious things, right? But people forget all the time. Or they after they're out the door. Oh, oops. Because what are you doing? What are you focused on? Getting the information. So when we get the information, sometimes we're so focused on that that we forget to do things like say thank you. So make sure you say thank you. Now, the donuts actually are a great prompt for this. I'm going to take one of these donut boxes. I have had students who have asked me, can I give away donuts? The answer is yes. You can give away, I was going to say whatever you want, but whatever you want that's within um, 
legal parameters. That's a good way of putting it. But here's the thing, I'm not going to pay you back for it. So if you want to provide them with donuts, feel free, but don't ask me for the money. <laughs> you don't have to though. The majority, I will tell you, the vast majority of, of uh, groups do not offer anything other than a thank you. Now, here's another thing you can offer though, a certificate. You know, you kind of go online, you download a certificate. Right, you make it all pretty, put in something fancy smancy sounding, put their name on it, there's a certificate. It now costs you maybe half a cent. It's another option. Don't have to though. But make sure you say thank you. Now let me jump over here really quick. So here are all of our sample documents. Make sure you go through them. I'm not going to go through them in, in class so that uh, you can go ahead and go through them again. We already looked at them very briefly. See which ones you want to use for your facilitator and for your testing, excuse me, testing scripts. Remember that I showed you two different ones. Do you remember? So choose the one that works best for you. You don't have to email me and ask me which one can I use. Use the one that works best.